Good evening, and welcome back to RimWorld. This is a Let's Play for Alpha 10 of RimWorld. We're going to talk some of the new features. We're going to do a brand new uh, beginning here. We'll set up a brand new colony and hopefully do better than we did last time, which we did fine. Nothing nothing too bad about last time. It just kind of uh, eventually Cassandra always outstrips you. It seems like uh, I haven't won this yet, uh, but there was some rechange. There's re rechanges or some rebalancing and changes to the way they do uh, difficulty settings. So we'll take a look at those in a minute here. Let's do a brand new colony. And we'll get into some of this stuff here right now, actually. So as I mentioned, they changed some of the ways they doing the difficulties. So before challenge was considered the 100% challenge. That's the, this is, as it still says, it's the way the game was meant to be played. Um, so this is still what we're going to go with here. It's a challenging game. It's supposed to be challenging. You're just not supposed to win every single time or ever, some in my case. But um, basically, before, all that scaled was the uh, the size of the armies that would attack you. Now, with the update here, it changes uh, all different kinds of manner of things here. So it's a lot more goes into each challenge level here, uh, which is interesting and kind of cool. So we're going to go with challenge again here. We'll do Cassandra Classic once again, uh, despite her uh, cruelty to us late in the game. Uh, let's pick out my new world here, Old Core Kalori, that's my one I just, Kalori? Kaloli? Kaloli. Uh, Kaloli in the city. Uh, we have Old Core Kaloli, and we'll have to pick a spot for it now. Last time, I don't quite remember what we're doing here. Um, we haven't done, Era Troubling we've done pretty recently. We could try Desert. I think we did Desert. I don't know if we ever did Desert, to be honest with you. Um, especially since they did the growing seasons. Uh, the other thing we could try to do again, somebody suggested doing another Ice World. Uh, we've done that pretty recently, I want to say a couple seasons ago, so I'm going to stick to Desert this time around. We're going to do it with a Desert World. I kind of want something with more hills in it though. Biome, Desert, Eastern Coast, maybe we want something with some, let's get some elevation maps here and see what we can see. Alright, so let's go like right here, Tundra, Desert, Large Hills. That sounds good to me actually. Desert, Large Hills, nice location. Uh, May to August growing period, we could still get a little bit of growth, but it's going to be a pretty hot one out there. Um, so we'll have to do a lot more uh, temperature management as it goes here. So I think that sounds pretty good. So let's go with Old Core Kalori here, and we'll start with a brand new world. So selecting the site, and now we get our characters. So um, we can choose from Philip, Flip, Philip, Paul, Flip, to Tezang, Tez, Tenzgala. Okay, not gonna have to say that last name. Luckily, he's Flip. He's Flip. Everyone knows him as Flip. Chemical fascination. Neurotic and abrasive. Doesn't sound like a very good combination. He's a decent doctor. Uh, military commissar. Let's randomize this again here. Let's just randomize it like 10 times here just to be sure. And, oh, ooh, interesting. Uh, we have a super melee guy. Another bruiser here. We got John. Jonathan Medcalf. Uh, farm boy turned unstable butcher. He's a heat lover, which is perfect for this, actually. And a slow poke, so he's going to be kind of a little lazy. Um... And, uh, construction is 11, mining is 11, actually this is a really good colonist. Can't do much cooking for medicine or anything like that, but I think this is a guy we want to stick with. Now one of the changes I've read about, but I didn't actually test yet, is that we can put numbers into a nickname now. Let's see, let's see if it works. Nice. Nice. Uh, we can do John317 as this guy's name, John317 the Butcher. I'm just gonna call John the Butcher though. Uh, we'll just call him John Butcher. Okay, John Butcher. Uh, we could put numbers in the names now, which is kind of cool. Um, let's pick up the next colonist here. Maybe we'll use numbers in somebody's name here. Uh, so, should we be... Uh, okay, so we have a housemate who is good at cooking. Decent decent all around here. Heat tolerant. Another good person to have right here. Very neurotic is fine. It's going to have a bigger mental break threshold. Um, careful shooter. It's fine with me. Uh, so we'll go with this. Cooking's decent. Everything's pretty decent except research. That's fine. We'll definitely need to make sure our next person is good at researching. Don't we have the Isis, the Joy Wirer? Uh, Joy Wirer artist can do research as a seven. Medicine's a seven. Pretty good all around here and capable of dumb labor. Now the other two are capable of dumb labor. Yes, they are. So that's okay. We could go with somebody that's a little bit more. They pretty much everybody's kind of middle of the road here. He's a prostophile which means uh, limited, feels limited in her feeble human body. Dreams of going bionic. Oh, that'll be fun. And then bloodlust. Uh, it's a rush from hurting people. Oh, man. Okay, this is perfect. Okay, we have a person that's just obsessed with uh, death and killing. Um, and also might be our doctor. So that's a, kind of a conflict of interest, I think. But we'll stick with it here. Because we got seven for research, seven for medicine. Those are the strong selling points. Housemate is also pretty good at cooking and shooting and construction and then John Butcher is good at several things here very poor at other things I think this is a good group I have a lot of good feelings about John Lynn and Isis sounds good to me let's start the colony up
All right, the three of you awaken to your crypto sleep sarcophagi to the sound of sirens and ripping metal. You barely get to the escape pods before the ship is torn apart, as it often happens for us. Let's pause here quick. Oh my, this is cool. Oh, a nice little cool outcropping over here. But honestly, this spot right here, everything about this is good right here. Look at this. There is a geyser right in the middle here. There's some nice protectable areas. We can build some walls up, have some nice defense going on right away. Um, yeah, this is going to be overall pretty good plan, I think. There's a room up here to use for this outset here. There's a room right here to use from the outset even, too. So, uh, yeah, we got some options, and I think this is going to be our main area here. We're going to dig into these mountains here and build up this, this area here. We're going to be like a nice sprawling city this time around. I'm usually, like, too, thinking too small, I think. Last time was pretty cool. We had a lot of different buildings and that kind of thing. We're going to try to make it to be a nice one connected complex this time around, but, um, yeah. Items left little doors will slowly deteriorate. Yes, I knew that. We found that out last time. So, let our colonists land here. Before they land, I'm going to unforbid all this stuff here. And then we'll get started on building. So let's make sure we got everything unforbidden to start with here. That's possibly close by. And... Good. Okay, so I think for our very first nights here, we're going to actually build up this area. All we need to do is slap a door on this, and it's already a house. So that's perfect. And then we can worry about making this into a better area over here. Include this in the area. Um, and yeah, we'll start walling some things off maybe. Uh, and it's focusing on getting some power going. So, let's see. Can we build farms anywhere here? This is soil. Okay, so there's grass over here. Dirt we can farm on up here too. So we are not going to be missing farms or anything like that. So that's great actually. Um, very, very, very good. Okay, so let's uh, let's start it going here. And actually, before we even start it here, I'm just going to let them land here. There's geysers here, here. One here. Oh, um, there's so many geysers. Okay, we're going to be good for power eventually here. Uh, so we're going to go with uh, structure right away. We're going to slap a wooden door onto here and make it a house. Put some furniture in here before we even do anything else. We're just going to put a couple beds in here. Um, we'll put one here. We'll put one here. We'll put one there. All right, cool. So we got room for our three colonists. And they're going to work. Okay, so let's get the overview open and see what they can do. So you'll notice a few new tabs here. We'll get to those in a little bit here. But um, so here it shows their passions. Oh, they changed the icons for passions too. That's kind of cool. Um, so we could set some people for construction. I think that'd be a good idea to have everybody possible on construction right now. Uh, researching, I'd only want the one person here. Medicine, I need those two on it. Actually, why is it set up for butcher? Is it, it's a doctor here. He's got a zero. Is he even interested? Not even interested. Um, so these two are going to go for our doctor. Flick is the flicking of switches. Um, so you can turn the stuff on and off as needed to save power, uh, which is nice. They changed uh, they changed smithing. Yes, they, okay, so they divided up tailoring and crafting into smithing and tailoring. Um, and uh, yeah, so smithing is creating rough tools and weapons. Or creating tools and weapons from rough materials, okay. And tailor is making cloth. Cool. And then crafting is... Stone cutting, smelting, and more. Okay, that's, that's cool. I like that they divided that up now. Uh, I say they, but it's he. It's Tynan. Uh, I don't need to say they. But it's a force of habit. They is a, the term I like to use sometimes. Um, hunting, we can put... Uh, let's put one guy on. Let's put let's put John the Butcher, even though he's mostly melee. Um, his melee skill is the highest. I think his, his shooting is not very good. Uh, but we can keep him as that. Growing, we'll put everybody on for right now just to get it going here. Um, we'll take him off of that eventually. Uh, maybe we should just pick the people out of the passions actually. Let's just put the one person that has a passion on it. Let him do all of it. Um, and then mining, we'll put the, we'll just pick the people's passions. You know what I mean? That'll be that'll be a pretty good plan, I think. Uh, we can't go wrong with that. Hunting is a few different people. So we'll actually don't want everybody hunting. Constructing, we probably want everybody constructing though to start out with here. Okay, so I think this is good. Let's talk about uh, timetables in a little bit here. Outfits in a little bit. Let's just get started with our colony here for a moment. Uh, and give ourselves a chance to uh, get everyone equipped and everything like that. So we have a melee, Mr. John, the melee guy. Uh, we probably do want to get you to this plastic steel knife, even though you are set up as our main hunter. Um, so that's gonna that's gonna be bad actually. Let's switch that around to be Isis, even though she only has a 2.5 in shooting. It'll improve as we hunt, and we'll set, we'll set both those people up for hunting. And actually, because I don't want the melee guy hunting, because you end up using a lot more uh, a lot more health than you should. Uh, who's our next best shot? I think it is Lynn here, and then Isis is an okay shot, so she'll get the pistol. Sounds good to me. Okay, so everyone's equipping everything. And we'll unforbid these things and set up some stockpiles so we can start bringing some stuff over. Who's ever available to do so? 
Um, okay, so they're gonna start making these these rooms here. Let's put our stockpile uh, up here for right now. And actually, can we build the beacon right away? Because that'd be great. We need 60 steel. I think it'd be a good idea just to build the beacon right away. Um, so let's see where we're we gonna put this. We'll put it like right here. Okay, build that, and we'll put a stockpile around it just to start with here, just so we can do some trading hopefully right away. And then we'll unforbid those. We'll get that all sealed off here soon. Um, and then we need to do some power, I think, is the next uh, step. So let's go with some power creation. So we have solar panels is our only option right now, or wind. Uh, solar panel with as bright as it is around here, I think this will be a good idea, though. Uh, we have to start also thinking about where we want to put the wall going across here. Uh, or we just fill it up with buildings, you know what? Actually, instead of doing walls, we might just want to do that. Um, and start putting in buildings over here. So... What do we really need? We need to have rooms for everybody. So let's start building some structures for that. Let's build some, some wooden walls. Oops. Wooden walls, like so. And we'll put in some, uh, like this. And we'll go like this. Two, four, so. I think that's too narrow, actually. I think that might be too small. I don't want to... We'll cancel this. Make it a little bit bigger than that. So we'll go to put a bed like in the middle of the room roughly. Yeah, put a bed over here and like have it. That'll be a nice spacious room for them hopefully. So we'll put up a couple rooms in here like so just to get started here. So we have a few spots for people to live so they're not getting the debuff from sharing a room. And then we'll start working on uh... Then we'll start working on making a, a room to cook things in. We need, a, we need a farm going, we need a place to uh, produce power, we need a lot of different things. Actually, now this is room is starting to actually take over our drop zone here. Um, is that going to be an issue for anybody? Uh, you know what? Actually, we can actually cut this down. We'll cut it around the room here so it's not taking it up here. Uh, we have Isis is currently vomiting. Oh, because they still have the space sickness or their uh, crypto sleep sickness going on here. What is this? Oh, camels. Cool. So we'll get some camels going. Uh, we've got a room over here to use up to. So yeah, this will be the beginning of some walls here. Um, or some, at least some obstacles for people to, uh, to go around here. So one of the changes they made to, uh, one of the changes Tynan made to the game here as far as, uh, animals is that they're not all just gonna lie down and let you hunt them. Some are gonna try to attack back and some will always attack back if you try to hunt them. We are gonna try to hunt this guy though, just to test it out here. So we'll set them on their duty for that. Uh, and then we'll also set up, let's see, we got the bed set up in here. Um, we'll want to set up the power as soon as possible also. So let's actually... Uh, so once we have this main room done here, let's set up a new room here to make, um, let's make a new room here. So let's see, let's put doors in here first of all. Those regular wooden doors here. Go. This is not quite the, what I had in mind here. This one is right size, this, the other two are not. So let's cancel these. I made them one too big, I think. Let's go wooden walls, like so. Four. Right, it's three thick in the middle. Okay, perfect. And that'll actually take up less room around our thing than just a little bit. Uh, so we'll go wooden doors here. And then we'll actually put in another wooden wall here and start uh, making of a common area. So we'll do like this. Look like this. Look like this. And that's going to take up too much space over here. I think what we'll do is make this room a little bit smaller. Um, or we might want to move this. Uh, now that we've already built and wasted the metal on it, we should probably not do that though. Let's go like this. And this will be a courtyard area here then. We'll do a wooden door here. We'll do a wooden door here. And we'll actually set up our kitchen and stuff in here. So that means we'll put our power over here someplace. We don't want it in the shade too much. So we'll go uh, power, solar panels. And uh, we'll put one right there, okay. And then we'll put in a battery right here. So let's start collecting some power. So did they get rid of the conduit walls? Because it doesn't look like we have any option for conduit walls. So that's a fine way of doing it, to be honest. Now that they've changed that we can lay down conduit without removing the, the obstacle that's being uh, put on, uh, that's, that's kind of nice, actually. So they'll also put in some floors here. So we'll put in some wooden floors. And then... Let's get a look at uh, the overview here again. Let's talk, actually talk about the timetables now. So let's take a look here quick. Right now it's set for anything and sleep. Um, and joy is the new thing. We'll talk about this. This is a big factor of the new update here. But basically timetables is a huge thing because you can actually set people's work schedules. Uh, so it's becoming a little bit closer to something like 
a prison architect here where you can have timetables for what everybody's going to do on a given day. So let's go like this. Let's go people working eight hours a day. Well, let's see here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hours of sleep. That sounds good to me. Um, we'll go with uh, anything in the middle here for lunch. We'll get a lunch break after a few hours here for, uh, let's go joy after lunch, maybe. Uh, so they have a couple hours to work on whatever they want there. And then they'll be back to work for the evening. So they'll have two shifts to their evenings. Well, that's everybody on the same schedule for right now. But once you get a lot of people, you can have like split shifts and that kind of thing where people are working and asleep in at different times and you have like night night guard duty and that kind of thing. Uh, kind of, should be kind of cool. So we'll create the stockpile and then we'll remove some of the stockpile here. Uh, zone. Uh, delete zones. We'll go through here like this and delete that. So that'll be our new stockpile. That's actually going to work out kind of quite nicely because we're going to want to put a roof over this anyways eventually. So, uh, so things don't get damaged, and we'll just have a little hole in there like we've done in the past. Uh, should be pretty good. Um, we'll also probably build this going up like this, so, uh, we'll want to remove this little edge right here, probably when we're ready. So, the next things we'll need are, uh, we'll need, uh, some conduits put in. So, we'll go structure, no, power. We'll go power, conduit coming off of here. And we'll actually go the other way. We'll go, we'll go like this, we'll go like this. This will be over the likely wall we'll go in anyways. Uh, we'll go like this. We'll go like this. Over through here. We'll bring it through here. So that'll be a lot of our metal, but it'll be worth it to have the conduits wherever. Actually, we probably don't need the conduits through there. So let's take these conduits out. We can actually click them now. One of the changes that they did was basically the menus are in our context base. So we, when we click something, let's say we click a uh, an animal here. You notice we'll get the, the hunt option right away when we click an animal. That one's dead already, so it's not going to show up here. But before, you'd actually have to go in the menu and tell it to hunt. Uh, whereas now, it's all context-based. Context so when you click something, it gives you the options available for that thing. Um, so like this one, it's forbid only, but if it was something that was like... Uh, what would be... Well, like one of the... I don't know what would be a good example of that, but... Um, you know, we can we can basically have the context base there, especially for canceling things. It's going to be useful. So let's go cancel these. Nope, not the wooden wall, though. Let's get the wooden wall back. And we'll let things go a little bit slower this time around. I'm going to play, try to play it a little bit slower this time around, actually, because uh, people can... We we'll, we'll want to see what they're going to do. We want to get back to the more story-based mode of this a whole thing here. Hopefully we have enough metal to finish this out. It needs, needs 70 more still. 60 more still, roughly. Um, it's going to be close. Let's see. 45, 40. Okay, we'll have plenty. We'll have plenty to finish that out. And that'll be pretty good. And then once we get that, we'll get our uh, kitchen area built in here. And then, um, yeah, it should be good. Okay, so they're putting the floors already. That's awesome. Uh, I'd rather they worked on this, but I guess you can't all be working on the exact same thing here for now. So let's let Lynn and Isis do their thing here. Let's speed it along just a little bit. I'm not going to use the full blasting speed because I wanted to keep kind of take a look and see, make sure everyone's happy as far as what they're doing here. Now, one of the other things, too, once we can start getting some more uh, weapons and items and stuff like that, is we can actually do outfits mode here now, too. So, um, there is winter gear. We can actually go, we can add, add new things here, so we can do new outfits. Uh, we can name it whatever we want. Let's call it, like, party gear. Uh, so, if we want to put the party gear on, we can actually change it so, like, the headgear comes off. We'll put on the cowboy hats only. No military stuff. And tinfoil helmets, of course, we'll do that. It's like a tinfoil helmets. Uh, and toques. Those are allowed to in the party party zone. Uh, personal shields are on. Check those at the door. Pants are optional. T-shirt is optional. Naked parties. That's what we're all about here. Done down shirts, maybe. Dusters only. Jackets and parkas are not going to happen. Tribal wear. Oh, maybe we can have a tribal party. All right, that's what we'll do. Tribal tribal theme party. Oh, toga party. I like, I like that better. Toga party. So we have our toga party outfit we can equip whenever we're ready. We can have tribal wear. Uh, no dusters. Tinfoil hats are allowed. Toques and cowboy hats are allowed. Power armor and armor vests are not allowed. So it's been kind of a low percentage thing, but we can only, we can also, one of the new things also has changed that you can have sliders here now. So you can see up the top here, it says uh, zero to 100% hit points. So we can limit the type of clothes that they're gonna wear based on the amount of hit points. So if we want them to only wear high level stuff here, we make it to 50%. And if we only want to make them wear their best stuff, we do legendary only. They'll try to equip the most legendary stuff they can get then. Uh, any quality lets them equip anything. If you want them wearing like crappy, crappy clothes, they can go awful to good here. We can kind of range how we want them, their quality of something to be. So I think we're going to have Toga Party as one of our things here. I don't know what we're going to actually put it with, but uh, you know what? We can do that. Uh, we'll do anything for him, though, uh, for now. So we get a good collection of clothes, but that's kind of cool. You can have battle gear. You can have, so, so you have certain people that are just like set up for the battle like mode. And then you have people who are going to be wearing like, the winter gear and that kind of thing when it gets cold out. 
Uh, it's easy to switch, and they'll basically it gives them the autonomy to go equip themselves whenever they get the chance to, instead of you having to manually do every single thing. Kind of just give them priorities of what they should go after, and if they can, they'll go after it. So it's kind of a cool idea. I like it quite a bit. Um, missing 206 construction materials. Okay, so trees are going to be a bit of an option, or a bit of a hassle here, uh, now that I'm thinking about it here. We used all this wood up, but we really need a way to get more wood. So let's start chopping down some trees first of all here. Let's go orders and we'll go chop wood. Okay, so chop wood, that's a good example. It gives us any options we have available. Can we chop can we chop down cactuses as wood? That's interesting. I did not know that. Um so we'll chop down some wood here. Let's just do an order to chop a bunch of this stuff here. And see if we can get some from it. Um Cause why not? We need the wood, right? To finish this stuff up. Maybe we should use metal for some of our more stuff here, but uh, metal is a valuable resource. We need it for other things right now. Um, this will start producing in a moment here. We think we need to wire in our battery here also, so let's make sure that's wired in too. Alright, cool. I think that should be good. So let's speed this along because they're going to go to sleep here now, I think. Yep, that's the night. And they'll sleep until... Let's see, what what's the clock say? What's the timetable say? They're going to sleep until... 22. Now, I wish it would tell you, like, which hour you're in. That's one option. I wish it would tell you, like, you know, you know, so you could see when they're going to pick up the next thing. But uh, 22, hour 22 is when they pick up uh, sleeping again, and they sleep until 5. Looks like they sleep until 6, so they should sleep until 6 here. If they're very well rested, though, we might not need to do that very often. And actually, the rest is pretty low, so maybe a full 8 hours is probably good. Um... Now we're gonna have to use a lot more stone, I think, in the future, so I want to definitely get the stone cutting research as soon as possible. So I think I'll set up a research table over in the corner here, uh, also. So let's go research table, we'll go steel research table, because that's all we really have right now. And they can work on getting stone cutting researched. And we'll put a stone cutting table over here someplace then. Sounds like a good plan. And actually all we need to do, we can have this whole room like boxed in here and all we need to do is just have a little gap in there for stuff to fly in and we'll be okay. So that's not too bad. We can, we can manage that. We need a food source desperately though. We need to start thinking about that as well. Um, we put a small farm over here. Let's put a small farm over here. Hydroponics are probably going to play a big factor in this particular uh, playthrough here. Uh, let's go orders, other zone, growing zone for potatoes. We'll put one like right here. Very small growing zone here. Uh, we'll put it like basically, we're gonna have a, like a lot of different farms I think. We'll put one over here. We'll put one over here. We'll put one over here. <laughs> basically this multi-farm going on right now. There we go. I don't know, we've never done farms like this before. Can we put a farm on the desert? No we can't. We can't put any farming on the desert. Okay, so that's good to know. Um, so we'll get this stuff researched as soon as possible. People are gonna go chop wood, I think, here soon. Let me pause it so they can go back to work. We're on this fast speed again. I should probably take that off of there because I did say I was going to. What is this? Limestone? We have limestone, slate. Uh, anything else? Limestone, limestone, slate it looks like for the most part here. We'll keep that in mind when we're choosing our structures. Ooh, this is a lot of limestone over here. We can do a lot of good mining over there. Um, should be pretty good. So we have an idle colonist already. Who is idle and why? Idle, what can, what can uh, idle? Lynn, what can you do here? Uh, mining might be a good idea. Don't really have anything for her to mine just yet. Don't really have anything for you to do. Plant cutting would be a good thing for you to do though. Maybe we'll get on that. Um, Lynn is working on it, good. We're getting one piece at a time basically. Need a research project, okay cool. So we'll get uh, Lynn, or Isis rather, we'll work on she, Isis, Isis is idle right now anyway, so let's get her as a research project for this. We'll do, very first thing we want is stone cutting, I think. So it's only 300 to research that, we'll let her go. She is a 7 as far as research goes, if I remember correctly. 7, yes. So that should get done relatively quickly here. Um, if, it, if I unpause it, of course. And uh, yeah, we'll start accumulating some power. We've already begun. Got some batteries here, and then we'll get a food source going here. Now, if hunting will be... Another method we can we can maintain uh, some some food at least for now, as long as there's something to make. And look at this! One of the new things is there's a whole bunch of new furniture. There's uh, steel dining chairs. There's uh, monkey hide arm chairs. Uh, there's you know equipment racks. We had those before. But there's also the new joy menu here, and we can also make now steel horseshoe pins, steel chess tables, and steel billiard tables. So let's put a horseshoe pin like right here. We don't have enough metal to do it, but we'll put it in like right there, and they will uh, go play horseshoes to increase their joy if we have somebody that's running low on it. Uh, let's see, health, 
needs. So they changed the needs also. It's a little more Sims-ish, I would say, as far as like their meters and that kind of thing. Um, their joy meter falls low enough, they'll definitely go desperate and they'll kind of go after getting more joy in their lives. Uh, so that's pretty good. Um, beauty is going to be changing kind of constantly depending where they are. And space, we can actually, this is a nice, we can actually visibly see their, ha their satisfaction with the space. So if they're really in a, a nice roomy area, they might be super happy with it. We can actually see that visibly about the rooms. This is actually going to be very, very useful information. Just like at a glance, you can see how happy they are with everything. Comfort, space, very, very cool. And like this is where it becomes a problem, looks like, uh, at this little dot right here, maybe. Um, it's hard by spending extended periods in cramped rooms. Cool. So space is going up. This room has plenty of space. Outdoors has plenty of space, of course. So they're happy with that. Uh, the new rooms, they might not be so satisfied with it, but hopefully they won't spend too much time in there. Um, we'll put the beds in there as soon as we can. I don't want to waste, uh, I don't want to waste more wood putting in beds just yet. And we don't have a stockpile for this just yet. And we have no place to put it, so it's spoiling in three days here. So we need to put in a butcher table here so we can butcher that. Um, production, power. So let's put a cook stove over here. Now this is going to be bad if it rains. Ugh, it'll be very, very bad if it rains. So let's, hopefully it won't. Hopefully it won't. We'll do this like this, and we'll put the butcher table next to that. Like so. Cool. So the people working side by side. Dropping the meat off here, and then picking it back up again. Uh, I put this away from the walls here, just so if it catches fire, it doesn't necessarily right away burn the building down, which is important. Um, I guess we shouldn't have wasted all that wood on the floor here yet. Let's cancel the floor here. We cancel all of it? I don't want to cancel all of it. Let's just cancel the flooring here. Because we'll, we'll free up some wood then. Well, we won't free up some. We'll free up... I don't want to cancel this stuff that we're working on, though. And we'll put in something else for the floor here. I don't know what we have. I guess we can do stone floors or something like that. We'll have to do stone floors. Uh, hopefully we get the, the stone cutting before too long here, though. And then we can definitely do stone floors. Uh, we'll put in the stone cutting table like up here someplace. Anything else unlocked in the beginning here? We have the steel tailor's workbench, the butcher's table, cook stove we know about. We'll need wood for that too, I think, though. Oh, just steel, okay. Needs a meal source, yes, I agree. Uh, we'll get that here soon. Uh, who's on farming duty? Who? I, why are they not working? Oh, there she goes. Lynn, playing horseshoes. Awesome. Is she any good? She got one. She got one there. Oh, she's got to be pretty close. Now they will play against each other too, so that'd be kind of cool. Oh, they go away. And uh, I was seeing uh, in the, the change log here that actually uh, the um, their shooting ability is affected by horseshoes. So very, very slightly, the more they play horseshoes, they will level up their shooting just ever so slightly when it happens. So that's kind of cool. Little things like that. Uh, I think pool also might help. That would make sense to me if that's the case. Um, we need to put an order in to chop this tree down as soon as possible so it doesn't get wasted. Uh, we'll get the rest of these things too here so we get the rooms all built. We're gonna try to, I mean, we're gonna build, do slow expansion this time around, so we're not gonna have, like, every single defensive thing we need right away. Um, we'll have to rely on our wits to defend ourselves a little bit here at the beginning. Uh, I'm not gonna build the, the, the gauntlet that I built last time. I don't think it was super effective. Maybe it was, I don't know. We'll talk about it. Uh, and, yeah, I think it's gonna do it for this episode. We got an introduction to Alpha 10 here. RimWorld is back. Uh, good things on the horizon. Desert's gonna be a little bit challenging to play as as well as the challenge mode is still in effect here, so we can beat it on the normal difficulty, hopefully. And uh, yeah, it should be pretty good. So if you're enjoying the series and you want to see more RimWorld, definitely make sure you're leaving likes and comments so that uh, I know that you're interested in seeing more of this. Uh, I really appreciate it. I do pay attention to that when I'm picking out new series and figuring out which ones to bring back and that kind of thing. And um, yeah, I really appreciate you guys watching and uh, hope you stick around for the rest of the series. So I've been Modi. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys back next time for more. Have a good night.